pressure advance. What is it? What does it do? And how do we tune it? In this video, I'll be answering all of those questions. This video is part of my Intermediate Sonic Pad series where I show you how to tune your Sonic Pad controlled 3D printer. If you want to see the other videos in the series, then check out the links in the description below. While this video is aimed at Sonic Pad users, it's suitable for any machine running Clipper. So what is pressure advance? With the X, Y, and Z movements on our 3D printer, we can pretty precisely control exactly where the nozzle is going to be at any time. Unfortunately, with the extruder, it's a slightly different story. With an FDM 3D printer, as we're melting filament and then forcing it through a tiny hole, there are additional forces in the form of pressure, which mean that the movement of the extruder isn't always accurately translated into the movement of the filament. When the extruder first tries to push the filament, or extrude, there is a pressure buildup in the back of the nozzle. When the extruder stops moving to try and stop extrusion, this buildup in pressure means that a little more filament comes out. What this means is that if the extruder has a uniform rate at which it moves to print something like a simple line, then the beginning of the line will be under extruded and the end of the line will have a little blob or will be over extruded. Pressure advance is a series of calculations that Clipper uses to try and combat this. In simple terms, it increases the amount of extrusion at the beginning of a line and then decreases the amount as it gets towards the end. In theory, this gives you a nice uniform extruded line. As the pressure buildup in the back of the nozzle will be different depending on your 3D printer's components, the size of the nozzle, the temperature of the filament, and even the filament itself, we need to dial in pressure advance for every individual 3D printer. The main benefit you'll see from tuning pressure advance is sharper corners and flatter sides on your prints. Another thing you might see is less filament oozing, which results in less blobs across your print. To tune pressure advance, we're going to print a specific model, measure the results, and then adjust the setting accordingly. I'll obviously show you how to do all of this. Before trying to do this pressure advance test, make sure that you've tuned your PID settings and set your printer's rotational distance or E-steps. If you haven't done either of these, then find the corresponding video in the description below and do this first. They don't take very long and you'll be back here ready to tune pressure advance within about half an hour. Assuming you've tuned these two variables already, then download the Square Tower STL in the description below. Import this model into your slicer and then change the following settings. I'm using one of the Creality supplied PLA profiles, which I showed you how to install in a previous video. You don't have to use this profile, it's just what I'm using for reference. Start by setting your layer height to around 75% of your nozzle size. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so I'm setting a 0.3 millimeter layer height. Set infill and top layers to zero and set all printing speeds other than the first layer to 100 millimeters per second. You also need to turn off any acceleration control you have turned on in the speed section if you haven't done it already. You won't need this anymore because with input shaping and pressure advance tuned, you won't want your slicer trying to control accelerations. Now slice your file and then send it to the Sonic pad ready to print. Load up any filament you want to use and then preheat ready. Now, rather than just hitting print, we need to send a couple of commands to prepare for the test. You have two options here. You can either manually enter the commands into the console on the Sonic Pad itself, or you can do like I'm doing, which is copying and pasting from the Clipper GitHub page directly into the console on the web UI. If you don't know how to do either of these things, then check out my Sonic Pad Basics series where I show you everything you need to know. The first command we're going to send sets the speed at which the Sonic Pad is going to attempt corners. The command is here on the screen, but you can also copy and paste it from the page linked in the description. This command will slow the printer down on the corners to make it easier to see where the optimum setting is. Next, enter one of these two commands, depending if you have a direct drive or Bowden style 3D printer. What these commands do is tell the Sonic Pad that the next print is the pressure advance test. What it will then do is change the pressure advance setting on each layer of the print so that we can see which layer and therefore which pressure advance setting is best. After entering the correct command for your 3D printer, print the file and let it complete. What we're going to be looking for is the best looking layer. If you notice that your print is steadily getting worse, then you can stop it early because you have what you need. With the print removed, have a good look at it. What you're looking for is the layer that has the best looking corners. You want nice sharp corners and flat sides. Once you've found your favorite layer, measure how far it is in millimeters from the bottom surface of the print and then write this figure down. We can now plug this figure into a very simple formula to calculate our optimum pressure advance setting. If you use the direct drive command, then multiply your layer measurement by 0.005. If you use the Bowden command, then multiply your layer measurement by 0.02. The result of this calculation is your new pressure advance setting. 
if you're doing everything on your sonic pad, then you can find the pressure advance setting in the same extrusion configuration page where you change your rotational distance. This is in the advanced options menu. Once you've set your new figure, try a print that should have nice sharp corners and you should see an improvement. Now, as you've probably picked up on, there are a lot of different variables that can affect pressure advance. To have your printer running at its optimum, then you'll probably need to repeat this test if you change any of the major factors that influence it. This could be a change to the input shaper tune, a change in any components which affect how filament is extruded, or even the filament itself if you really want to dial in the perfect tune for whatever you're using. In the next video of the Intermediate series, I'll show you how to use macros to streamline some processes and save some time. Click here to go to that video now. I'll see you there.